Have you been told that your energy is what causes your dog's behavior? Your energy is what's making your dog insecure. Your energy is what makes your dog misbehave. I was told that too. <laughs> but here's the thing. I'm all for like woo woo energy and happiness, but can we get a little bit more concrete with it? Like, can we actually talk about what, what's actually happening? What is the relationship between the dynamic actually like between you and your dog? And how do we quote unquote fix it? If you are the one that's causing your dog's problems, I'm sorry, but just like pushing your shoulders back and lifting your head up in the sky is not going to suddenly fix it. So let's talk about actionable steps that is going to get to the deep root of why you are affecting your dog's behavior. Let's go. What's up guys, it's Jenna with Dog Liaison where I coach you on how to enhance your dog's mental health. On this channel, we break down scientific research in order to inform us on how to train dogs. I'm a professional dog trainer. At this point in my career, I work exclusively with dogs facing anxiety related disorders. I do have a signature coaching program called the Recovering Rover Program for Dog Anxiety. And the truth of the matter is, the RRP is a bit of an apology letter. It's an apology letter to a dog I had growing up. I'm gonna share the story with you in a second. I created this program because I really wanted everything I wish my younger self and my family had when we had Chase. So Chase was my childhood dog and we showed Chase. And you know, after about age two, three, Chase started demonstrating aggression towards me. And he would quite literally jump off the, my, my parents' couch, charge up the stairs and attack me. And it got so bad that like we couldn't be in the same room together and we basically had no trust between one another. I was in that age told that we should be doing alpha roles and so I would put him in his place and I would put him on the floor and he would growl at me and sometimes I'd get bit and I would like trying to fake it and I'd be like I'm the alpha, right? It was a whole thing. Oh my god, if I could go back and fix that problem. But here's the thing. Chase was actually behaviorally euthanized and he never actually got the treatment that he deserved. He never actually got the care and the education that he deserved. And it wasn't really my parents' fault. Like, I don't blame my parents. I don't hold resentment for them. I don't, none of that. But also, the reason why I have my RRP, the reason I have this business, the reason I have this YouTube channel is to make it so that people actually understand what they're doing. Because when you hear things like, it's your energy and you just have to show your dog who's boss and you just have to be more confident, that's not actually helping anyone. It didn't help me in my little 13, 14, 15 year old self. I got nowhere with Chase. If anything, our trust got worse as I started doing those behaviors. And I was consistently told that it was my energy, but here was the truth of what was actually happening. My body was traumatized. I don't know if you've ever been attacked by a dog or nearly attacked by a dog, but you know, there's like this feeling. It's like a, it's like a vibe, man. And what actually happens is your organs start to feel like they're closing in around you. You start sweating and your heart rate goes up. And for me, my mouth pursed and I'm like externally frozen, but like internally, I'm like, oh my God, I'm about to get aggressed towards, like this dog is about to aggress towards me. And it's happened a couple times in my professional career too where like I'm looking at it and I'm like, ah, I think this dog's gonna aggress if I don't back up, right? And it's just this sensation that comes over me. It's a visceral physiological sensation. What is that? Is that an energy? No, no, no. That is this really ancient part of all of our bodies. It is a tool that we come equipped with in order to survive and be the fittest. And species have had this tool for millions and millions of years, far before even humans existed. And this tool is called fear. <laughs> this tool is called hazard avoidance. This tool is called alert and aware and oh crap, I'm about to be in danger. And it is beautiful. And what's awesome about this tool, known as fear, is that it actually recognizes bad things before our brains even recognize it. Because what would happen was, I would tell someone like, I think Chase is gonna aggress towards me. I can't go down somewhere right now because I, I, like, I, I see it. Like I feel him looking at me. I feel him pausing at the bottom of the stairs and he's gonna run up and he's gonna attack me. Like I feel it. And I would be told by society, well, Jenna, is it actually happening? You're getting yourself all worked up for something that's not actually happening. No, 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 no. My body was responding to trauma. My body has recognized patterns that lead to getting hurt. 
And so in order to prevent itself from danger, it sends off red flares, it sends off signals to prevent me from moving forward. That is exactly its job. It is not an energy. It is not something to be damned. It is not something to be mocked or just stripped and said, you need to just get over it. It is something to appreciate and say, thank you body for letting me know, even if it was subconsciously, that something is wrong and that I need to respond and I need to be aware and I need to be alert. Thank you body for this ancient tool. Even in this video, you guys can see I'm like getting passionate. It's because when I hear trainers demonize this visceral feeling of our organs, of our heart rate going up, of our stress, of our tension, of our bodies responding to its trauma. And they demonize it by calling it energy that we are insecure and that's causing our dog to be insecure. It is absolutely inaccurate and it is diminishing a very significant event. And now at this point you might say, Okay, so if it's just this visceral tool, I'm just supposed to live with it. I'm just supposed to, how does my dog know? How does my dog see it? This is something called pheromones. You ever heard the saying that dogs smell fear? In some ways they do. Because your body, when it becomes stressed, when that fight, flight, or freeze response goes off, when you become fearful, is going to emit pheromones. It's going to emit scents. And dogs can smell pheromones very well, even though we can't. And so what ends up happening is your dog is recognizing like there's a scent that you've just emitted and usually the scent comes in alignment with a certain event. And it absolutely is something that your dog is recognizing the pattern of. It's not his fault that he's recognizing the pattern of. Your body is also recognizing patterns. It just isn't a pheromone. Your dog is identifying patterns in your behaviors. Your dog is identifying you clenching up in your shoulders and you maybe not make eye contact all of a sudden. Your dog is identifying you tense up. They're noticing these subtle things and it might seem crazy that a dog would be doing that. But I ask you, if you were triggered by something or someone, would you not study that thing to make sure you are in control of it as much as you possibly can? My phobia is clowns. I hate clowns. But if I'm at a park or whatever and there's a clown there, you bet you I'd be staring at that thing. Like I am staring at every single one of its moves. I wanna know where it is, what it's doing, not gonna creep up on me. I am studying it. So if there is something that is traumatizing to you and to your dog, you betcha your dog is studying it. And there's nothing wrong with that. That's not a bad thing inherently. That's not something to be demonized. It's something to understand and appreciate. That said, it doesn't mean that we should all be living with this. It doesn't mean that you should be traumatized every single time you take your dog out for a walk. It doesn't mean that you should have to live your life in tension and that your dog should have to be responding to that forever. We still need to work on that. But the way we do this, the way we get you to feel more confident, to feel more trusting in your dog, to have better visceral physiological responses that are within your control is to recondition you. Not to just say, you're fine, everything's great, you need to relax your shoulders and everything will be beautiful. No, 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 no. Instead, we need to recondition your behavioral and emotional responses to your dog's triggers and to your dog's events. In the same way that we recondition your dog's behavioral and emotional responses to triggers and events, we need to re-hardwire your behavior so that they respond automatically. So that when you walk into an event or you walk into a situation, you are not taking the time to analyze what am I doing? Think about something as mundane and simple as you going to the grocery store. You do not expend a lot of energy thinking about going to the grocery store and picking up milk. You get in the car, you go on autopilot, you drive to the store where you already know the store is, you get out of the car, you go get the milk, you already know where the milk is, you come in, you pay, it's, it's requiring very little thought. That is the level of conditioning and experience and rehearsal that we need to give your body and your brain when it comes to your dog's behavior and how to tackle those events. That is done through rehearsal. It is not done through just merely saying you're the alpha and by embodying the energy and the happiness in the world and you're fine. No, we need to get to the root of it. We need to get to the root of what you're feeling. And if any trainer is dismissing your visceral experience and calling it energy and calling it fluff. Don't listen to that trainer. They don't know what they're talking about. Like just, just turn them off.
That's my call to action for you at the end of this video. If there is a trainer on your IG, on your TikTok, and that you're paying on your YouTube, who is telling you that your energy is the problem, stop listening to them right now. They don't know what they're talking about. I know I get passionate on this topic, guys. Thank you for holding out with me. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, hit the like button. It really helps me in the YouTube algorithm, and I'll see you guys in the next video.